Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Hot Pants. This is episode... Where are we at, Hotbid? What, what is it, six? I don't know. I don't count. That's please. great. All right, and this week, our very special guest is the one, the only... Hello? Zai. <laughs> Zai! We almost got it. We almost got it, but it's Zai. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you for coming. So, hello, hello. What a time to be alive. Zai has returned to our world in Dota, but it ain't all Dota on this show. In fact, we like to split it up on about half, so we're not going to bug you too much. But how you been, man? What, what's up? I've been I've been good. Um, after TI, we had a rather short break, and then uh, after the roster stuff got sorted out, we traveled here to Alameda. So we're currently boot camping. All members are here. Uh, coaches are here. People are here, and we're just uh, doing our thing, pretty much. Excellent. Now, for those of you who might have forgot, you left because you went back to school, right? Yeah. What did you learn, dude? What did you learn at school? <laughs> well, just in general, what did you learn in your time that you went back? Do they have majors in a uh, Swedish high school? Majors? Like, like uh, do, you have, do you concentrate in one thing, or is it just I, general education? I mean, I did the uh, the IB diploma. Uh, I don't know if you know what that is. No, e educate us. It's some uh, sort of international, uh, like, standardized curriculum that's all over the world, pretty much. Oh. So I did that, which is pretty different from normal, traditional Swedish uh, education. So we had... Uh, I guess the biggest difference is that everything comes down to our final exams, which we had before the summer, which decides pretty much 80% of your grade. It's not like that in a, a normal Swedish school that you what? just... What? 80%? Yeah. Jeez! What'd you get? What'd you get on it? Did you get an A? Um, of course you got no. an A. It's I. I did, I did the mistake of... Because I enrolled in this when I was 16, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And back then I wasn't playing Dota. Uh, full time, I was playing it on the side, and I hadn't really found a team yet that had a lot of success. So I did the mistake of choosing really ambitious courses. <laughs> I had like uh, pretty hard math. I had physics and chemistry on higher level. So Shit. I pretty much set up myself for for disaster when I started playing Dota. Isn't um, that how all of our lives go, though? Yes. Not, same thing. Uh, it's I true. Suppose. I worked as a psychologist. An, that's right. Uh, well, I got my degree in neuroscience in psychology, actually. So uh, you got wait, you you have a degree in neuroscience? Yeah. What happened, dude? I don't know, dude. I took it because I'm scared of zombies at the time, and I thought I wanted to learn about the brain. And then I worked in the field of neuroscience for two years, and then I just started making memes instead, and it was a lot more fulfilling. Sure, I help oh. people get over their suicide and their chronic mental disorders, but it ain't as fun as making memes. <laughs> I failed, all right? I used to help the world, and now I make it a worse place. But Zai, you never answered my question. You learned about chemistry? You learned about what was the number one thing that you think you actually got out of your education? Because it's a big deal for you. Not a lot of people would go back and finish their education. You did it. So why? What, what, was it, what did you take away from that, doing that? Well, my main idea, or what I had in mind when I made the decision to go back to school, was that uh, I realized that Dota wouldn't last forever. And if Dota lasts, lasts forever, God forbid, <laughs> um, I would still want to have the option to you know, leave and be able to do something else somewhere along the road. And uh, what I gained from it... Um, you no, know, just any general knowledge. Like, what what do you remember the most from your time going back and getting getting educated? I mean, any factual knowledge is like out the window already. <laughs> you don't remember any of it? I mean, I remember some of it, but not not the whole. Do you remember what a mole is? I do remember what a mole is. All right, is. good. You're good. Uh, you're worth five. Your schoolmates kind of like they do they any of them watch Dota? Um, some of them play uh, like other games. Okay. That are, you know, League of Legends, you know, the casual stuff, pretty much. Yeah. And some of them watch just for the sake of watching to support me. Oh, but that's not nice. a Not a lot of people understand uh, what it is I do. Most people just uh, just knew that I was 
famous and I traveled a lot. I was gone a lot. Ah. Yeah. Dota's pretty big in Sweden, though. From my short time in Stockholm, uh, when I was doing Dream League, uh, e even, like, you know, our guests were getting spotted off the streets, man. I thought it was pretty big over there. Yeah, it's probably bigger in the uh, in the larger cities, which have uh, more of a more of a scene, I suppose. Oh, okay. Uh, and I think also Dota in Sweden is more popular in the uh, in the older generations. The people that played, you know, Warcraft Three, they played Dota One. Oh yeah. All that kind of stuff. I think people my age have never really gotten into Dota. There's a lot of uh, other games that are more appealing to them, like League of Legends and. Uh, yeah, uh, damn, you're just really ripping on League. We're, we're trying not to mention it, but, man, you fucking no, no, hate not, League of I, Legends, I, dude. League is a good not, game, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I have nothing against on League. <laughs> I have nothing against League. All right, are you playing anything else besides Dota in your off time here? Got he's, uh, he's playing Kingmaker. He's King? making uh, new teams that are uh, going to win TI7, so I, I want to hear about that. Ah, I want to okay. hear about that shit. Tell us, uh, tell us about TI, the, the, the post-TI EG and how that came about. What was so your the, role in that? Yeah. This iteration of TI? Or yeah. not TI, EG. After TI, what happened? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it was rather swift, if I'm going to be honest. I was traveling home from, from TI. Uh, we had some brief discussions after TI, after we lost, of uh, what to do going forward. Um, I think the general consensus between everyone was that Fear was going to quit. He'd been pretty open about it, and that's what he said after TI had ended. Uh, so everyone kind of knew that was coming. Uh, as for Peter, he said in our in our talk after TI, he uh, proposed the idea of stepping down as a player because he was getting more and more into management and uh, taking a more uh, I don't know what to call it like uh, getting involved more in the organizational stuff uh, instead of playing. So after he proposed that, uh, everyone just thought for themselves for a bit, and then I was flying home from from Seattle. I had a 10-hour flight. Uh, when I get to, I think it was Frankfurt, I I get airport Wi-Fi. I open up my WhatsApp, and then all of a sudden, there's a new team. <laughs> and they're just like, you, you didn't even have to consider it, or what? You were just like, all right, that's cool. I'll be on this team. Or did you think about any other teams? I thought about other teams um, a bit. I mean, you always get offered pretty much if you're... I mean, that's pretty much how it goes in roster swaps. If you're a good player, if you've had a lot of success, people are going to ask you to join their teams. So I considered it. Um, but I think nothing... I didn't really get any offers that were better than this one. and. Maybe not better in terms of you know player skill and ability. I'm not sure if this team is better than others in that regard, but I enjoy and I'm going to enjoy playing with everyone on this team. So I think that was the most uh, influential factor when I decided. What uh, who? So who's you? Who are you the best friends with on this team then? Um, probably Artur. I mean, what do you, what do you like about Artur? Nothing in particular, probably. <laughs> um, nothing in particular, just... I mean, I, I might not even like him, but we just go way back, right? Well, All right. Tell, tell us about him. Tell us about our tour that the our tour that no one else sees. We what we need to know. Because me and Slacks are obsessed with our tour, you know? Uh, yeah. We're trying to get him on the show, and he tells us no. So. Did we? <laughs> <laughs> we try to, and he's like, he's like, just ignores me, you know? Well, yeah, that's because you're... Fucking weirdo. I'm sure if I asked him, we'd be all right. But <laughs> all right, you can ask him, dude. All right. <laughs> okay. Ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, not bit a stalker. Uh, indulge him a little bit. What do you <laughs> tell us? Some yeah. quirks from your yeah, teammates. You're his friend. I am his friend, and we've been playing for since 2014, I suppose. Uh, been through a lot of stuff. Um, bonded throughout the years. Been through ups and downs. Different teams, different iterations, success, failure. We've been through a lot, and uh, I guess that just brings you close in some kind of way. Yeah, you guys have been to war, dude. I mean, I feel, I feel this. I feel the same way about the other people I've played with as well. 
when you spend so much time with people and you try really hard with people to succeed, um, I guess that's uh, that's some sort of you know strong friendship that's formed in teams. Well, maybe not for some people, or maybe yeah. not between some people, but. Well, then that's why I want to ask you about, you know, you've been on with our TZ Sumail universe. I want to know about Crit, dude. How do you think he's going to fit in? This is a big change, uh, especially for EG. I mean, A, losing PPD, and then B, do you have any experience with Crit? Have you guys played together? I I'm a little rusty on my history here. Yeah, I actually, uh, I mean, no one probably knows about this, but uh, when I was playing for Stay Free, which was the first team me and PPD created uh, yep. back when we started playing, uh... After we you know, played some Joy Dota Cups and we got on, you know, the Joy Dota like channel three or whatever, where there's like 1,500 viewers. Mm -hmm. After a bit of that, some teams started uh, inquiring about us. Pretty much, me and Peter got offered to play with a couple of teams. Uh, Peter tried out for Dignitas. Uh, I got to try out for Mouse Sports, which was the team Crit was on back then, mm -hmm. with a bunch of other Danish players. So I was actually trying out to be mid for them uh, after Syndrome departed from that team, I think. And I could have joined that team, but I chose SSD eventually, which was me, PPD, Snake King, Arise, and Come With Me. Ah, so this is a missed opportunity. You could have played with him before, but now yeah, this, this is it. I could have been a core player as well. <laughs> oh, man. Would you, would you rather be a core player? No, all core <laughs> players are assholes pretty much. There we go. Wait, why? Because they're core players. Yeah, man. They're not... They don't got no brains. All they do is last hit. Yeah. That's it. You would know, Hopid. You're a core player, right? I'm I mean... not a core player, dude. <laughs> I, play, I play off lane, so I get no farm. I don't count myself as a core. Like, there's, so, there's only three honorable roles in Dota. And that's support, support, and off lane. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Got it. So are you excited then to play with Krint? I mean, uh, do you respect the guy? Or do you feel like yeah, he's... Yeah, you know? He's uh he's a good fit. He's very like both me and Artur, uh, and his personality and behavior. I'm an old. We, we both played, uh, you know, pubs and stuff with them before. So wait, I think how, how, wait, how would you describe you and Artur's personality? Um, all right, he's probably not that much like Artur. <laughs> I I track that. He's probably more like me. Well, and what do you like? I'm like uh. Uh, more the calm, silent type, not that outgoing, not that loud. You seem like you're very, uh, mild-mannered, like, even emotions. Yeah. yeah. When's the last time you got really mad? Because I don't think I've ever seen you actually get really pissed off. I don't really... Yeah, I don't usually get pissed off. It's not really my thing. Have you ever killed anybody, Zai? <laughs> <laughs> Couple of people. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but I'm worried. No, but uh, yeah, go ahead. I've never really felt like anger is something I need in my day-to-day -day life. Well, it's you like just felt it wasn't something you needed, so you just <laughs> got rid of it, or what? No, I mean, I, I just never, I just never find the opportunity to be angry. I suppose. Come on, when you're a kid, you, you you're, had to have gotten. Yeah, angry everybody gets angry. You must, yeah, you're not I mean, fucking with me that you've never gotten angry. Uh, he actually can't He's gotta think. He's I mean, gotta I, think. No, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't get that angry. I get annoyed a lot. I think that's my way of coping. I get annoyed. Like I go to an airport, I see a family of you know seven Chinese people. I get annoyed. <laughs> what? I guess, oh shit! What? No, no, no so, and like it's an airport, and they're like in line, right? Uh -huh. For like security or whatever. Uh huh. And they're just slow. There's like two elderly, <laughs> three children, two people. And I get annoyed. Why do they have to be Chinese? Why, All right, sorry. Why did you they specify any, Chinese? They could be any, <laughs> any ethnicity. Let's go America stuff. Okay, yeah. that's fine. That's <laughs> White, Caucasian, Americans. All right. So uh, so you don't like people that wait in lines. You don't like people that hold you up. That's You get annoyed. Oh, that's true. Chinese people do skip lines. They do. Yeah. I tell you that. Like, Okay, they, they cut lines. They don't wait. Yeah. So... I get I why understand. you hate them. Uh, that makes sense to me, man. I mean, but anyway, I hate, I don't, I hate line cutters too. I don't <laughs> want to express my uh, hatred for Chinese people. That's not my my point here. <laughs> yeah, didn't didn't that... you want almost play in China? Yeah, yeah, I've had I had really good relations with Chinese players oh, and yeah. uh, people. I got a lot of Chinese friends. I'm not racist. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kidding. Yes. 
<laughs> no, so uh, I, that was one thing I thought about after after this TI as well. Yeah. Because China is obviously very lucrative, right? It is. I think that's the word. Well, there's a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, you can uh, make a lot of money on those uh, streaming sites. Yeah. So I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the money is obviously a big part of why I do this. So that uh, that was one thing I considered after TI. Really? Who yeah. are you? But yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. I mean, I, I'm not sure where I would have gone, but I'm sure I could have gone in. Come on, dude. Do you yeah. speak any Chinese? None. Ah, that's fine. So Why would you have talked to them? Black did it. It's all good. Black yeah. speaks some Chinese, though. Yeah, but uh, he didn't before he went there, I think. Right. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you, I, I, you I probably would have picked up the language. Actually, no, I probably wouldn't. I probably would have <laughs> waited until you actually started Chinese, but. Uh. Do you only speak English and uh, Swedish? Uh, French as well. French, oh, French as well? Okay. Oh, man. Damn. God damn, So, I, I mean, I have some uh, uh, degree of. What's it called? When you get at, you know, picking up languages. Can we hear a little bit of French? Oh, that's called. Can no. you say, come on. Please talk to you. It's the language of love. We got to, my girlfriend still How? has the hots for you. She's waiting until you're How, past uh, 18. He, <laughs> yeah. How are you like, I, he sounds like, he does not sound like he's under 18. Like, you sound very mature for your age. Thank you. I, I don't understand how your personality was developed because it seems like a lot of 17, 16 year olds, they just, they're annoying. And they they're impatient and they speak in a certain manner. Yeah. Uh, and you you clearly don't. I don't understand like what how like how were you raised differently or what? Or is this just how your personality is? I think most of the most of that comes from me always hanging out with older people when I was younger, and because I played a lot. It, uh, and when I was young, I was uh, I was pretty talented at games. So. When you get good at something, most people aren't your age anymore. If you're like 13, it's not like. Wait, what were you playing when you were 13? Uh, I think Guild Wars One. I played. Uh, I, think, I don't know if Dota. Or I don't know if Heroes of New Earth was out back then. I can't remember the years, but I, it was either that after Dota One and Guild Wars. Oh, huh, okay. But anyway, I played a lot with like when I was young. I used to play with my brother's friends as well. Uh, older brother, so I used to play with them because I was pretty good at games. And they uh, they wanted me to teach them and stuff. So I've always been around like older people in the social settings, especially after I got into competitive gaming like Heroes of New Earth. I played with people who were a lot older than me. Uh, in Dota, I've always been pretty much the youngest guy on the team, except for now. And uh, I think at some point you just. Uh, absorb uh, things from your surroundings, right? Yeah. Do you ever think that maybe later you'll go through like this thing where it's like, you know, the Benjamin Button thing and then you'll be a lot younger when you get older? <laughs> like, when I turn like 22, I just get fucking stupid? No, <laughs> not stupid, but you know, you just, I don't know, getting mad at stuff. Yeah. Going out there drinking and going ham. Maybe in your 40s, you know, the midlife crisis kind of thing. You worried about that? Not really. <laughs> it doesn't I'm... seem like a lot of things bother him. Slack. No, I'm trying to find something. There's got to be something in there. I know that you're, can you're. We... It's deep in there. Something bugs you. Can we, uh, can we get his opinion on the other teams that have formed? Yes, that'd be great. Uh, I would like to hear your opinion. Well, first, actually, I'd like to hear your opinion on why Team Secret didn't work the last two years, because you were on that team, and then you were gone for a year. But then, yeah. So, so let me. Let... Let me ask you about that. Why do you think Team Secret didn't work? Uh, where well, do you, you and Arteezy was on it. Yeah. Where do you want to start on the timeline? Me and Artur? Yeah, I guess. So, I mean, our team was really successful up until TI, right? Yeah, you guys won four straight lands. It was all going great. You were the favorite yeah. going into TI. Everyone thought you guys were going to crush it. And then for some reason, shit happens, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, at some point, I think this whole Team Secret thing got kind of overblown, though. Um, <clears throat> Like, in that scenario, at least the one with me and our tour, um, whenever you go into a tournament and you're like TI and you're the favorites, it's always going to be hard for you. And I don't think Team Secret's been the only team that's kind of suffered the, the same uh, uh, the same fall. 
Oh yeah. yeah, literally everybody this TI had a fall. Like. <laughs> yeah, I mean a lot of favorites this TI, uh, you know, crashed and burned as well. Yeah. So. The pressure, you think? Yeah, it is the pressure, because when you're on top, everyone's gonna look at you, and if you're not constantly creative and uh, improving your game plans and strategies, you're gonna get figured out pretty much. And that's what happened to us at TI5. Um, we play the same things we've been playing for the past couple of months, and people were much better, people were smarter, and we lost. Mm. And this whole like Kuroki or tour situation that was going on, I think uh, ultimately it wasn't the thing that caught the, or caused the team to lose at TI. I think uh, the pressure just got to us all, and we uh, we didn't improve. Um, so that's what I think happened at TI5. And obviously, when you're losing, there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be conflicts within the team. I think no team that constantly loses tournaments is you know happy with how they are. That's just the nature of the game. So it's it's kind of like a a shame that that thing got so overblown. I would say. Yeah. A lot of people kind of uh, seem like they took it. I don't know. Community took it personally because they had it such in high regard. Oh my god! And then when well, you know happen, what it is. What? It's Euroth versus NA. That's yeah, what made the fans. Oh really yeah. Off, they hate that. Yeah, because the, the Euro fans think Arteezy's wrong, and the NA fans think Curl's wrong, and that's what really oh, made, played off each other. I have to excuse uh -huh. Hotbid. He's he's stuck in memes from three years ago. He's. <laughs> he's that's back. not a meme, dude. It still exists. <laughs> it's still out there. It's not. See the Euros there. try and claim Team DC this year. That's right, I did. Oh yeah, the the hate like, was on like... for DC, and then when they started winning, oh, one of our great Euro teams. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite? Yeah. <laughs> you have a favorite region, Zai? Are you a big NA Dota guy, or you think? Um, no. <laughs> I, I I've grown to like Sweden more and more as the years go on. Whoa, Why be careful. Why for Alliance then? Yeah. Because I don't have my reasons, right? I've I've been offered a, like a lot of times to to uh, to join alliance, but uh, pretty much every time I've had uh, offers that were, in my opinion, better than uh, the alliance one. So uh, I've never really been able to play with them. If you didn't have so, any, any offers, you would do it though. You'd be a lion's well, eye. No, no better offers. Yeah, I mean, I'm always gonna go for the best offers, in my oh. opinion. So if alliance was on top of that, sure. I feel like Alliance is racist. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They only have Swedish guys. What's up with that, Hotman? <laughs> that's shit's not fucking, racist, that dude. shit's racist, dude. No, it's not. Imagine if I started a Dota team and I'm like, sorry, team. Mexicans only on this team. No, no. <laughs> I mean, people would be in an uproar. Because it's Sweden, it's okay? I don't think so, dude. It's messed up. <laughs> I know, let's, let's report them. Let's, let's report, report them to the authorities. Zai, don't you ever join that team, okay? Never sure ever. Thing. Sure thing. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's hear your thoughts on the teams that have been formed. So I'll meet, let me just start naming a few, okay? So yep. how about Team NP? I think Team NP will be uh, one of the stronger teams coming out the shuffle. Really? Uh, yeah, I think people will be surprised. Actually, who's, I mean, who's captain of that team again? It's Jackie Mao, isn't it? Jackie Mao's the captain. Oh man. I think he's the captain. Oh boy. I believe in it, yeah. dude. I'm with Zai. I believe that team. I, I want to believe, but I've been hurt so badly. <laughs> you, know? you know what I'm saying? Like, every time he gets you to believe, like, maybe, maybe this time, right? Yeah. But then, uh, you know, things things always happen in the craziest of ways. You just have to adopt the, one of the philosophies I have in life. It's pretty much... Uh... Never expect anything from anyone, and then <laughs> if, someone, if, someone comes, if someone comes up with something good for you, then you're just gonna be uh, pleasantly surprised. I see. But if not, then <laughs> there's nothing. A very uh, conservative philosophy. Yeah, that's been my approach to uh, flying, for example. Every single time, you go into a fight thinking it's gonna be completely garbage, and if it is, then there's not much you can do. If it's above average, then you're surprised. You're happy. Yeah, man. You were born in the wrong time, yeah, buddy. I can see why he never gets mad. If he's expecting <laughs> everyone to be the fuck worst ups. case scenario every time, then you really can't get angry. Everything's just gravy. Yeah. 
You should have been born in the 1930s, I. Right now, you could be like in a the Great 20... Depression. You, you could have been a. You'd be like, ah, at least we have soup. You know. I would have to go. I would have gone to war though. I think you would have been the best new like noir cop ever. Like you know, just be like, yeah, you can't expect anything from anybody these days. There he goes. All right, All right next team. Next team. All right, next team. Oh, yeah, I, I, was, I wasn't uh, done with it. Oh, you're not done. With it. All right, continue. <laughs> I just, I just wanted to explain my reasoning for thinking they're gonna be good. Okay, right, please. Okay, go please. Ahead. So we have, I mean, obviously Jackie Mao is Jackie Mao. Right. So there's that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think the, like the four other players are, uh, probably severely underrated by a lot of people. Um, always been, you know, berated for a long time for his carry position. But I think if he's comfortable in a team, he'll perform. He was really good on Dignitas. I remember his carry was yeah. quite, quite strong. Yeah, but in the past couple of, I guess ever since uh, TI5, people ever haven't really... Ever since PPD destroyed his confidence. Right, he hasn't really found a lot of success, <laughs> but I think if he uh, if he is comfortable in a team, he's going to be really good. And I think MP is the kind of team to uh, to support him. And we had uh, Avery, or SVG as our coach, uh, the, this previous TI. And I was really impressed by him. I hadn't seen him around before, because uh, I was gone. But uh, I was really impressed with what he was doing. So I think uh, he's going to contribute a lot to that team. Um, I think MSS is also one of these players that have always been pretty good, but haven't really been able to get on a stable roster. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing kind of goes for Thiepen. Um He's been coaching for the past two years, I suppose, with a short uh, stint of playing. Uh, so he has a lot of knowledge about the game, and he's thought, you know, he's been thinking about the game with, you know, captains like Puppy for one and a half year, however long he's been coaching Secret. So he's also going to be contributing a lot to that team. So I think MP, MP is sort of like a, a mix of uh, players that have kind of fallen out of favor, and... Just it's like perfect a... for a redemption story. Yeah, it is. Anime. Yeah. Like like anime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, can I do a team? Because I'm very sure. interested. Sir, I want to know what you think about Kai P. In my book, nobody believes that it's going to be the team. I think this is the team to look out for 100%. And you uh, played for them, didn't you, a little bit ago? Yeah. I, I, I casted your game at WCA. Sorry about that. But... Um... <laughs> Uh, yes, I want to know from the word of mouth of you, is this going to happen? Is Kai P, the Sing Sing team, is it going to finally happen and be a respectable top tier team? Who's their new fifth player? Well, it ain't Zai, so automatically they're fucking up, but, uh, let me see. No, 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 no. <laughs> they got some, they got some, what, was it Fluff? Yeah, it was Fluff. It yeah, is Fluff and stuff, that is correct. Yeah. yeah. I so mean, you... I'm not going to say I'm expecting great things from them. Um, maybe they'll pull through and... You know, stabilize themselves as like a tier two team in a scene. Mhm. Mm um, but I'm not sure if they'll they'll do more than that. To be honest, it might be a bit harsh, but I guess I can't just sit there and I say mean, that every team's gonna be great. There you go. That's the truth. And if you played with them, you're the one who would know more than anybody. So. Yeah, a lot of people were pretty upset with me leaving. Uh, I've seen in hindsight. Oh, uh, with you leaving Kaipi? Yeah, some people hold a grudge against me, which I I don't really get to be honest. Um, I mean, I think. Sure. I don't know, dude. At it this was... point, it's pretty not personal. I think everyone yeah. moves. I mean, I would say so too. Like, I was playing with them for a couple of weeks at most, and obviously, if EG offers me to play TI, I'm gonna play TI with EG rather than you know playing a shit ton of open qualifiers. Of course. It's so then he ended up playing open qualifiers, right? Yeah, yeah of course, but we played it in A. There were like two good teams here. So the, the were, offer is the yeah, same. Sure. Kai P and Alliance. Same offer. <laughs> Which one do you get? <laughs> Come on. Probably Alliance. No! Oh! <laughs> Betrayer! Racist! What? No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Alright, what do you got, Hoppy? What team do you want? Alright, I want to hear what he thinks about Liquid. Um, oh, yeah, that, that was my other good one, yeah. Liquid's going to continue to be a strong team. Um, Are they I better think... than last year? Um, I, mean, I think Miracle is arguably better than Fada. 
Um, what about the, the bulbs? The other switch was Bulba for Jerex, and yeah, I mean that's the uh, that's the thing we'll we'll have to see, I suppose. Uh, he hasn't played support since TI4, where he was a really annoying support. He just he uh, was he did a good job at TI4. I remember that. Yeah, he was, was so not... he was so annoying. He like <laughs> he picked himself Skyrath or yeah, bottom yeah. every game, and he ran he at mid lane. the meta. I remember yeah. he he set the meta that that TI. I mean they didn't win, but like Liquid was leading the first two uh first two days but then i think they yeah. got scaled later on but i remember we lost to them in the group stage um, that's the rtz was... ricky meme yeah i was playing lich him <laughs> i was playing lich and we we're dueling mid and we just got ganked by bulba over and over again it was it was such a mess because we like the first kill that kind of like spiraled the game out of control was bulba just running mid in ward vision and our towards them back off so we just ended up dying to him and then from that point on, there was like a tinker in mid who got a first blood or whatever, which is fucked. So what do you think that about- a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, it was an awful game. <laughs> it was fine. It, it, it's awful enough that he remembers it two years later, dude. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think I remember most of my games, to be honest, if I get some like notion of what was going on in that game. So you've had some experience with Boba in the past, right? What do you think about all this Boba hate? All these idiots saying that yeah, they don't like all mad. Nobody likes him. I like them. Racism. What do you think? You don't racism. like the Indians. <laughs> um, I'm not. Bulba's good. Bulba's always been good. It's kind of one of those players that didn't really find a stable roster as well. Uh, right. After. After whatever he was on, he's kind of been roaming around with the earth. That's what I'm saying. Wherever. Bulba's but, a. He, yeah, go ahead. Bulba's smart about the game. Like he's one of those people that are really good at analyzing and understanding Dota. Which is kind of the thing that you don't get to see, you don't, uh, like as a spectator, you don't really get a feel for that when you look at players. But some people are way better than others at actually understanding the game. I feel like Boba, this is going to be his most successful team he's ever had. Because all he does is talk. He talks all the time and he's on a team with four of the most silent people that I can think of. Miracle, Mind Control, Matumba, and Kuro. Yeah. They're just going to listen the entire time. But that's what I'm worried about with new EG, dude. You guys are a little quiet over there. You're you're going to be the most chatty dude on that team now. I'm terrified for that. Is Crit quiet? I have no idea. Crit's quiet. I think. Um, out of game. But... I mean, out of game and in game is kind of different. That is um, true. I would say... I mean, he's kind of got the same demeanor as me uh, out of the game. But in game, he's, uh, he's a lot more active, I think. And obviously losing PPD as a captain of shock color is kind of the hurdle we have to go through as a team. Um, but I just think that makes us, uh, it forces us to step up as players and individuals and, you know, take responsibility. And I think that's the best way to foster leaders and foster leadership anyway. You kind of like grow it from within. So mm -hmm. me and Crit have been around captains for a long time. Uh, and as we're playing support, I think we'll have uh, most of the responsibility in game. And uh, you can't just rely on the same old people over and over again. Eventually, one of them's gonna quit, and you're gonna have to step up. And I think that's what uh, we're gonna have to do now. Is this, being crit. is this the making of one day Zai captain? Is that gonna be you one day, Zai? Um, captain Zai, position five support, huh? I don't know, maybe. Uh, he I've seems like he'd be like bit. a really chill captain. Yeah, probably. I'd have to learn to get angry, I think. Dude, yeah. That'd be so scary if Zai was your captain and then he yelled at you. I'd like shit No, he my would pants. just, he would, it'd be straight, straight ice, you know? Yeah, he'd be like, that was an official. I will break your finger. <laughs> if you ever do that again, you're off this team. I don't get upset. <laughs> I get annoyed. <laughs> Fuck! Zai, can you give us your, your scariest voice for us? No, please do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm not, you to do one thing. I'm not a scary guy. I don't know why you want to make me appear like a scary guy. I'm, I'm rather kind. I know. That's that's what people say though. That's what the scary yeah. guys say. They say I never get mad. I'm super nice. Then you go to their house and there's a dead body. You know, you don't know, Zai. You don't know. Z so let's continue with the teams. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. Well, All right. O OG team OG. Um, OG is like, I think the four people, 
consisting of uh, uh, S4 Jerex, Final Tail. They're all gonna fit together rather well. I mm -hmm. think the, they're not gonna have any troubles working with each other. The only question mark on that team is obviously the uh, the new guy, Anna, or whatever he's has called. It, have you has a new 9k player or whatever 8k player has a new player that's that young with that high MMR ever really failed? I can't think of an example of a player with high MMR who's young failing on a top tier team. Yeah, I guess not. Mason. I, I mean, it's Mason kind of... is not young. Oh, he was like 35. Young. Maturity, he was, a, maturity he was a young stud when he played for us. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he was. I haven't seen that one. Ah, there's this one like really funny copy paste about me, Zoom. <laughs> Where he, like sw it's like he swooped the scene or something, made fat stacks. I think that's something like that. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Anyway, I think I think you're right though. Um, like most of these people who come on the scene. Uh, that are really young. I have a lot of MR. It's been like Subal Miracle and then this new guy. I mean, Weeha, right? A little bit. Ah, uh, Weeha. Probably maybe as well. Yeah, they all succeed. Yeah, I mean, I think the easiest way for a team to uh, achieve success is having one of those star players and just building the team around them. It's because they, they're impervious to pressure, it seems like. It seems like uh, they just don't they just don't get angry or don't get tilted. As yeah. easily. Dude, you're so uh, dumb, but there's there's so uh, many other factors. I mean, just because they're good at pubs doesn't mean they're going to be good at lands. Look at Wings. I mean, that team used to be horrible at lands. They lost every single one, but they won every single, like, open qualifier online, you know? There's two parts. Can't be a pub star and go to TI and win it. I mean, geez, no one ever done that except for Sumail and, you know, everyone else that's ever done that. But there's a lot of shit in it, okay? I'm just saying there's a lot of shit in it. You can't just yeah. assume. But I I'm think, saying that. Oh no, go ahead, Zai. <laughs> I think for a team, like when a team incorporate, when a really good team, like the four people of uh, OG, we have Fire, No Tail, S4, and Jerex. They're all like established players that have been playing for a long while, right? Mm -hmm. So when these people just incorporate one new guy that's really good at doing his thing, it's not hard for the team to function properly. I would say, like it's yeah. not. It's not a very uh, hard thing to do. It, it's like very natural because you just recruit this one guy that's really good at you know, playing mid or playing playing carry, and then you support him, and then he wins you games. There you I go. feel like those guys are also the best their first year too. Isn't yeah. it kind of true? Well, they're just like really good the year that they come in, and then they get jaded and beaten down by all the losses, and then they suck the next year or, or they're worse. Not that Sumail's like bad now or anything, but he was ridiculous his first year, right? Wow. Yeah. They're like Walmart. Remember? They're like Walmart groceries, dude. If you buy them, you gotta eat them that day, or else they're gonna be <laughs> rotten. By the... <laughs> they got a fucking forty-eight hour shelf life. That's why they're so cheap, you know. So every right, year, Zai. Fly's got it, maybe Fly's got it right, you know. Maybe Fly will just cycle in a new eight K player every year. That's the play, you know. Yeah. Maybe they just oh. drain them, you know? Like they have a machine that sucks the MMR until they're husks. <laughs> right, Zai? Wait. That's probably it. <laughs> I must all right, be all right. One, all right. last one. Last one. one. Last one. Last one. Yeah. Last one. I'm Team over. Secret. Um, Secret's interesting this year, to say the least. Um, I mean, Clement's always been good about building teams. And this year he went for the... Uh, like super international approach to building a team. Yeah, and, got some uh, Asians. Yeah, and I mean it's hard to say whether or not they're gonna do well. I think all the players on that team are good, um, but obviously the international thing might be hard for them to work out. But I mean, obviously, like for a captain like Clement, just taking a couple of players and building a team, uh, it's not that hard for them. And eventually they're gonna. You know, yeah, start playing. Start playing well. I think. But puppies had a uh, had worse finishes every year since TI won. Damn, dude. Yeah. It's true. It went first, second, second, eighth, eighth, last, right? Yeah. So according to that trend, this year they're not gonna even qualify. That's a shame. Condolences. I mean, no, no. I, 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 think they'll, well, I think they'll qualify. <laughs> I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying. Jesus, you know? dude. 
I think yeah. I, it's the facts. It's the fact. I think this team's gonna do good. The facts. As I mean, as I said before, this team's got a lot. Team Secret's always been like, oh, Team Secret, they're gonna be so powerful. This time, a lot of people are just letting them chill. And, you know, yeah. they. And no I think pressure. This time, no pressure. No pressure. I think that's good. For, I think that's good for like if you're not pressured to do well. I mean, this team, my team, is super pressured to do well. I think. So we'll see if that gets to us. I hope not, but. For Team Secret, they don't, as you said, they don't really have a lot of pressure on them as of now. Uh, I think if they're starting well, people will just be surprised uh, instead, which I think is good for them. I think it's good for the scene if Puppy does well. Yeah, and it probably I is. think it, it's good for the scene if he returns to play with Dendi at least one more time before he he retires. That'd be cool. I'd yeah. Enjoy that. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I wasn't not? actually around for the Puppy of the era, so I don't really have. You know, the same uh, nostalgic, nostalgic feel about it. But yeah, sure. I'm with you, Zai. I don't give a fuck about Puppy, right? <laughs> Alright, I have one really <laughs> important question left. Alright, hit me. Do you have a lot of fangirls? Um... In comparison to who? Just the so average Dota player. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> to be honest, I appreciate oh. it. How how do you feel about Crit being on your team now? Oh, That's a good look. he's a good-looking guy, you know. I think he he's... might have more than you. Oh, think he's competition. Yeah, Absolutely. So. No, I'm, I'm good. Oh <laughs> shit! <Okay. laughs> the confidence. <laughs> All right, so, are do you have a girlfriend now? Don't uh, say no. it. Don't no, say. No, oh, okay. that's the right answer. So, Even if you do, don't do you say think it. You, so I don't think Crit has a girlfriend either. But do you do you and Crit? Are you guys the best looking support duo in the world right now? You think that's the case? You think that's the case, Slacks? Oh, them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm straight Probably, as an arrow, right? but I'd fuck them for sure. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> come on. Now, now, now that EG has I the can't think of any other now. support duos. Well, who else we got? I mean. I mean MMY and Lan M. Oh God. <laughs> Remember when they were on a team? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I guess. I mean, it, it has to be. That's that's it has how. To be them, right? I can't think of. Can you? I can't think of any. They're they're gonna if they ever do a Dota calendar of every uh every every the best the best looking people in every. Alright, this is getting weird. This is getting weird. <laughs> the, you you told me to ask this. Like, that you, is not you, true. Get, that is not are you true. Uncomfortable here. I'm on. Yes. Yeah, it's getting it's weird. Like we're all we're all comfortable, guys. You know. All Let's right. Relax. All right. So that I mean I, I got so he's not worried at all about crit I understand you know um, but what about the other guys on the team? I mean it's it's the law of the jungle right? That's how it works. <laughs> what the fuck is the law of the jungle, dude? What's the law of the Can jungle? You... <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? I I don't know what I don't know what, what jungle we're talking about. It's like the the strongest survival. Oh, the survival of the fittest. I see. Yes. Okay. That's okay. how it works. It's the same right. thing with same thing with girls, right? Survival of the fittest, understood. Yeah. Well, girls usually it's the survival of the meanest. And what <laughs> is that too far? Sorry. My girlfriend's very mean to me. Anyway, uh, so uh, let's <laughs> wrap this up. <laughs> we uh, we've been doing some research on you. Uh, we asked you before you came on the show. This is where we stopped talking about Dota, by the way. So, uh, we asked you your favorite book and your favorite movie. Right? Yes. And could you repeat what those were for us? So, movie was Wings of Desire, mm -hmm. and the book was Sino's Conscience. And that's correct. And we have both read and watched both of those, right, Hotbid? Yes. Yes. But I'd also like to explain that these are not normal. Uh, these are not normal. Like someone's gonna. Like usually we ask them, and people are like, "I like the Avengers," or "I like Game of Thrones," and. Zai picked a, uh, what's it called, unreliable narrator book written in Italian in like 1923 or something. Like, what? <laughs> Why do you like these books? Like, what? What is this? Like, I don't understand. What possessed you to pick this as your favorite book? Like, I want to know that first. That one I just read because I wanted to read something uh, Italian. Yeah. I, I like <laughs> Obviously, I do, like Italian literature, right? Ah. Anyway, I'm just I'm just gonna preface this with like. Obviously, 
I sort of um I don't really want to get berated for my choices. That's what kind You're of not going to get berated. berated. No, no, yeah, yeah right not, not, not by you guys, obviously. But oh, it's like, okay. it, it's very normal for people to just uh, insult you. Oh, you think you. people are going to make fun of you for the choices? Yeah, definitely. No way! Are you serious? You're reading yeah. philosophical shit from fucking 1930. That, that's what probably Einstein did, dude. They can make fun <laughs> of you, but they're idiots. I mean, you just bring out some you... of that... Do you Shit. like anything that's mainstream? Let me ask you that, too. I mean, I've always been uh, straying away from that kind of stuff for as long as I can remember. What's your favorite pop song? Call Me Maybe? <clears throat> that's, no. Um, that's a good one. That's LGDs. Wait one sec. <laughs> what? He's Googling pop songs. Stop him. Uh, <laughs> I like uh, Skater Boy. That's a good song. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's a classic. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's even it, even it's like kind of hipsterish now. Old, yeah, that's, I suppose it's an old song. It's pretty good. All right, so I'm ready to talk to you a little bit about these things. And I read them, you know. I did my we'll research talk about for the book this. First. We're gonna talk about sure. the book first. Yeah. So uh, the name of the book again? I, I forgot. Hop in. Uh, Zeno's conscience. Zeno's yeah. conscience. Now this book was written as a make-believe dude's memoir. That was yeah. not also dude. It's it's just. His memoir that might not be true. I don't think it's actually. No, big. no. Uh, the, the, guy the, the, the guy who wrote the book made up a character, and then oh, that character yeah, wrote yeah, a memoir. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so my... there's, th there's basically this dude yeah. who just writes his memoir, right? And that's pretty much it for the story. Right. It's not It's not a very complex story, to be honest. Well, it's well it is. It's a funny story, though. It is yeah, very. It is, it is very really humorous. funny. I, don't, I didn't it, find it humorous. It's a funny book. What? I found it, I found it very philosophical. All right. Are you joking? Here's you my question. It was funny? Here's my question for you. In the novel, <laughs> Zeno writes about the struggles of the last cigarette. Like, he's always having his last cigarette because he's going to quit. And what he thinks is his last cigarette ends up being the first last cigarette of hundreds. He always goes back to it. So, Zai, is your last cigarette evil geniuses? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I thought we were done with the other dude. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just getting philosophical because this is a philosophical piece. Do you feel like in your life you always say you're going to walk away from something and then it drags you back? Or when you make a decision, like do Dota. you stick with it? Like Dota, you know? Dota I mean, itself. It's, do you have last a, cigarettes, dude? That's just addiction in general, though. Isn't it? <laughs> Don't destroy it's my like, philosophical arguments, okay? No, but it, it's just uh, one way of describing addiction in the book. Okay, okay, I got a backup then. I thought you might get me on that one. So in the book, Zeno believes that life is a sickness. And every day that we live is a symptom of this illness. And every problem is an ailment. And by the end of the book, he starts thinking that life should be purged and destroyed to get rid of sickness. Is that how you think, where dude? You, where are you getting I'm, I'm getting it. He says that <laughs> one day he's, he said he Did hopes that work? someone steals a nuke. And blows up the world to get rid of disease. You know? The disease of life, dude. I mean, he's a hypochondriac. Like, he thinks he has a yeah, lot Yeah, but that's of the disease. point of the book is that it's like a metaphor. Not only is he hypochondriac about himself, but he thinks that existence itself, that's the Clearly, disease. Clearly, I did not read. He didn't read it as no, well as I did. I, I, I'm a little versed in 1930s uh, Italian literature. Anyway. I mean, the, the weird part of this is I read the book, right? And I'm not going to say and sit here that I completely understood the book and all the fucking <laughs> symbolic <laughs> messages and all that kind of stuff. Because you're, you're reading off the Wikipedia article or whatever you found. <laughs> <laughs> he clearly is reading some message board and reciting yeah. Not true. There's and no that's, fucking way you came and up that's with that like, yourself. That's like the old dudes that read the book and then you sit there and you know, pretend they understood <laughs> the book and whatever and they post the thoughts. And I, I can't compete with them. I learned honest. Italian I, I for this. Compete. <laughs> you did it. You, you read it in Italian. Shut up, dude. I used Google Translate for three weeks for this. <laughs> Alright, just to answer the question. Do you think life is a sickness or do you think it's beautiful? I think life is a glorious thing. Okay. Yeah, man. Well, I'm all life. out. That's it. Yeah. That's all I got. I, I, I have more to talk about the movie because this is the original movie that City of Angels was based on. That's did you, watch did that you one? see. Did you ever see City Angels? Uh, I, actually, I actually haven't. Have you seen it? Uh, so yeah, I'm... Nick Cage, baby. So, City of Angels is a lot more depressing than this movie. This movie ends in a very uh, optimistic way. Like, So, spoiler alert for these movies that are like 20 years old. 
City of Angels is about an angel that decides to become human because he falls in love with a human woman who uh, is Meg Ryan in City of Angels, but some other German chick in this one. And in the end of this one, he uh, he becomes a human, and then the ending is like open, like you don't know if they have live happily after or whatever, right? They just together. Yeah. In City of Angels. Nicolas Cage becomes human, and then they have, like, one night together, and then Meg Ryan dies. Yeah, dude. So then... Does she become like, an angel? The... I forget. She just dies. Like, she gets hit by a truck or something. Yeah, that was and funny. she dies. It... it was funny. What are you talking about? And it's, like, really tragic. <laughs> he gave up immortality and everything to become human, and then the end of the movie is him, like kind of accepting that he's human and it's like it's still a little positive but it's like way more sad you know uh, I mean, people cry in that movie that shit so, ain't sad dude that's like the guy they... he's leaving king supers and he sees like the pack of gum and he buys it and then he regrets it later i mean don't make rash decisions that's all that movie's about <laughs> i mean he caused her to get hit by a truck essentially yeah because she was wasn't paying attention to the road because she was so happy that she was with this guy. Right, because you know? life is a disease that needs to be expunged. <laughs> right, Zai? Is that what? <laughs> so why do you why do you like this movie, Zai? I want to I want to know because this is a very weird movie to pick. It's yeah, sure. I mean, it's not that weird to be honest. Uh, like the the movie itself isn't that weird. It's not like super hard to understand or whatever. I it's just... not very experimental or whatever. But I watched this movie with uh, Phil and SVG before Ti. Uh, during our boot camp, and I can't remember how we found it, but I really like it. And I really enjoyed it. watching it. Phil's probably that that guy that comes up with this bullshit. No, I don't, think, I don't think Phil chose this one. I think I think I found it, but I can't remember where. Me and Phil watch a lot of movies, by the way. It's kind of like our thing after scrims and stuff. Oh, cool. So, uh, <coughs> I mean, this. So wait, wait, is... wait, wait. Sorry, before before you yeah. go on to the next thing, I need to ask a question about Phil. Sure. Who do you like more, Charlie or Phil? Phil. Phil. Oh shit! Straight up. Okay. All right. You know, I'll ask you more about that later. Go ahead. Continue with your thoughts. Uh, I mean, I was just gonna like uh, explain my thoughts about the movie. Sure. But did you, in comparison to uh, State of Angels, I haven't watched that one. Uh, as you said, this this one has like a nice ending, right? It's, it's a uh, much more positive ending, correct? Yeah. It's like uh, it's a very romantic movie, to be honest. Yeah, also, I thought City of Angels was kind of, like, the whole, like, demeanor of the movie is very sad. Just, yeah. like, overall, it's, like, very sad, and it's, it's not the same. It's, it's just different. It's, like, this one is... The mood changes throughout the movie, pretty much. Like, the first hour or so of the movie is just him and his angel body, like, uh, observing. Yeah, they're, like, talking to each other and, you know. Yeah, and they're just observing a lot of different humans. And, yeah. like, getting a... Like, you're introduced to them, and then you follow them around observing people, and you're sort of, like, introduced to uh, humanity in that sense. Also, it's because it's in black and white, you kind of, it feels like, because, like, City of Angels, they mute a lot of the colors. It feels, um, in general, you can tell that it's sad, but for some reason, black, this black, it, because it was in black and white, I don't actually feel, I didn't feel as sad when watching it. Dude, yeah, I don't, I don't want to call you out here, but, uh... I won't call you out, but I watch the entire thing, and they use colors all the time to show happiness in the film. You know, for, it's usually black and white, and then colors come in to show like human aspects and shit. Yeah, right. That's in, how they. In, that's how they use color, right? Yeah. yeah that's City of the, Angels. The they make. In yeah. City of Angels, the entire beginning and like middle of the film is like really like they mute that shit like crazy, and I can't. And it. Normally, if you have movies in color, you see like all this vibrance and shit. And then when it's when it's like, black, kind of like muted, you can tell right away that they're trying to, like, it's very clear they're trying to make it sad. Yeah, sh yeah. shit's like Gears of War. Right. Well, that's that's a proper analogy. It was very dab uh, artistic decisions. Anyway, are we keep going, Zio? I'm more interested in what you think. Yeah, I don't, oh. I don't think I don't think they they tried to do that in this movie. The black and white was not to you know convey like some sort of sadness or depression in this movie. It was just they clearly separated the two, like angel and humans using color, which was pretty nice in this movie. And you could see like 
the scenes where he's uh, following the girl that he's in love with, uh, it switches from his perspective, which is monotone, to her perspective, which is you know, vibrant and colorful. And it's sort of like, a, as I said before, the first the first uh, hour or so of the movie is just like this uh, observation of humanity. And then one of the angels gets so uh, kind of like obsessed with humanity, right? And he uh, he really wants to experience it after you know observing the humans for so long. And then he falls in love with this woman who he follows around. It's pretty creepy to be honest, in hindsight. Yeah, it's like kinda he's stalking her. Yeah. She falls in much. love with him. It's kinda like Twilight. Isn't that what yeah. always happens though? I mean is that not healthy? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't meet my girlfriend until I spent two years dreaming of our relationship. Oh, we all have our tickets. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh this is where that song comes from too. You know, yeah. the or not not the German movie, but City of Angels, the Sarah McLaughlin song. Yeah, I'm yeah. About the one that's always used for sad shit. What well, City uh, Angels was, and I don't want the, the, the world to see me. That was that one. No, yeah. that's Google Dolls, right? <laughs> that's Google Dolls. That was the main thing that was on all the trailers when it was in theaters. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also known for the Sarah McLaughlin song, right? Oh, right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can I talk about this movie already? I'm gonna. I sat down the other night. This movie is three out, two hours and thirty seven minutes long. <laughs> I watched the whole fucking thing. <laughs> I got a lot of gripes. Number one, all the angels are wearing ponytails. They're chilling out. It's yeah. the most Euro goddamn movie I've ever seen. I'm sorry. It's a German movie, dude. I know it's a German movie, but it's unnecessarily long. The metaphors are drawn out. Both the guys are wearing trench coats and ponytails. This is it's the most in the, Euro. It's made in the 1980s, dude. It's before the Berlin Wall fell. It's fucking Euro trash, dude. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. I hated it. It was. They a... don't have anything to do. They're like, they're just like the movies aren't edited down, dude. They aren't edited. Why did they waste so much time? Did you know how ha- there was People like? Just have a lot of time, dude. I stopped watching this shit. Movies. He read the thoughts of a baby for like 20 minutes. A baby, dude. <laughs> God, babies fucking... are humans too, man. Yeah, but yeah. what they they're not thinking about shit. Have you ever talked to like a four year old kid? They're like, Hey, 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 my dog is brown. Like that I didn't learn <laughs> shit. Well, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's, that's part of humanity too. What a baby just thinks? Observe, you can't just observe the fucking cool guys. A baby? Lax, as well. Lax is not gonna be a good father. I'm gonna be a great father because I know whatever my baby's thinking about is irrelevant. He's a fucking baby. He talked to an <laughs> elephant in this movie for fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, he's trying to grasp what he, he what humanity about. is. Oh, yeah. Oh, I that's, understood that's, it. Yeah. I'm just saying, we didn't need two hours and fifty minutes to understood it. I wish I died by the end of the film. I'm not trying to shit on your favorite movie, but it's. <laughs> Do you like a modern movie? Can you give us a modern movie? <laughs> what? Um, I, about, I, would, I thought it was I a great movie, it. though. I will say, I I don't rec I don't regret watching it, and despite how I felt when I was watching it, it will stay with me for a lifetime. So. I'll say I that. mean, it, of course, it's not one of those movies to, you know, put on like a Friday night. You got your popcorn, you got an hour and a half. Yeah, that was yeah. my situation. Want, I thought you, you, you were giving me a flick. Like, he opens it up expecting to be like Armageddon or something. That's what I thought. I was super excited. I was like, oh shit, it's Zai's favorite movie. Desire. I thought it was cool. Did like, you know. I really think it was going to be some like. I thought it was going to be about airplanes, not like <laughs> angel wings. I mean, the, the, way, the, the way I look at movies and my selection of movies. That okay. There's, you know, there's different types of movies, and that, yeah. this one is, you know, it's more like intellectual, more philosophical. It's not it the is. thing, you know. As I said, it's not entertainment in the same kind of way. Right. So if I'm on a, if I'm on a flight, and I just want to kill time, then I'll watch all the shitty movies. Of course. I watched, I watched the new X Men. I watched the old X Men. Dude, on the, my the X Men sucked, dude. The yeah, it was so horrible. fucking so bad. bad. And I, w- I watched the old one after, and it was even worse. Ugh. The, the best one is First Class, and that one's not even that great. Yep. Uh, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, none of these movies are great, but they kill time for me. Right. So if if I'm on a flight and I want to kill time, I'll watch this shit. I'll watch Bruce Willis fight against bad guys for like six hours. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah I'll watch that. But this one, yeah, this one stuck with me, though. I remember it. So, a question for you. In the movie, uh, the angel, you know, he looks at other things and he decides to join them and see how life turns out. It's almost like he was brought from, you know, he falls in love with them again. Is that kind of like EG? Is that? 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You don't have to. <laughs> just kidding. But uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, I watched the whole thing and I had nothing. I I had an empty notepad for questions for you. I literally, my brain was, it was off. I don't know. We got to watch that volleyball anime that, that Imperial Envy uh, recommended. That's what I, that, that's like. what did it. Uh, I think Arthur is watching that one now. Oh, oh he is? Okay. Yeah. I mean, all Perfect. these people watch such shitty anime. <laughs> Finally! Wait, do you have good anime, or no, you can this... recommend us? I mean, my favorite one's always been Legend of the Galactic Heroes. What's that? It's about, like, uh, like two space empires. Legend of the Galactic Heroes? Yeah. If this shit's from, like, 1920, I'm gonna be pissed off. It's, no, it's, like, <laughs> nine, <laughs> the 90s or It whatever. is, uh... There it is. It's a military science fiction... Yeah, I mean, uh, and it was created in uh, 19, uh 1980s. 1980s. Hey! <laughs> I, no, but that's that's one of my favorite ones of all time. A lot of people have that one. Like, I hold that one really hard in regard, because I wouldn't peg you as a guy who watched really anime. Good. Of course, I, he watches anime. Do they all do? I mean, I, I don't really watch it anymore because I got bored with all the like all the new shows are pretty much the same. Like I've never really been a big fan of you know this the guys with superpowers and you know the the scenes that cut into their heads you get like their thoughts in the middle of a fight like oh shit he's gonna use his fireball and then I gotta dodge and all that kind of stuff yeah. that stuff is boring you you don't like the animes where they yell stuff before they do it yeah not really that's not really my not uh, a fan of those my kind of thing but anime like anything else is it's like a medium right right. I mean, it's like it's like writing a book. It's like painting a fucking picture. It's like making a movie. And there's also an anime. So, <laughs> some of them are good. Some of them are shit. Most of them are shit. Um, but there's a couple of gems in there. And I think Legend of the Galactic Heroes is one of those. Very well. I'll give it a watch. That right. one and Naruto. <laughs> also a classic. Dude, I, I watched that classic. shit when I was I watched that shit when I was like twelve. You were a Naruto kid. Dude, that one was like 12. Well, that was tough. Yeah, like way long ago, like four or five years ago. <laughs> yeah, He's and 19, at, and, dude. And at that, at that age, it's fine. That's seven years ago. That's like more than half but the then, life. But then you're like fucking 19 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you can't watch that shit anymore. It's like embarrassing, I would say. It's true. I used to be big into Pokemon, and then there is a time where I'm just like, I think I'm too old for this. Like, it's getting creepy. And I had to stop. Yeah, some... When uh when the people that uh are watching it have ha are half your age, then it's I think it's time to it's stop. It's time to stop. Yeah. When you're starting to learn about yourself, masturbation, all you got is Pokemon. It's time to stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm bringing this interview right down. Hey, anyway, uh, save me, Hotbit. Say something. I do it. I'm out of stuff, man. <laughs> I, think, uh, <laughs> I think we're okay, out. Well, hold on, hold on. I want to know. A little bit more about your home life. Yeah. Before we uh. Tell us personal shit here. you never told anybody. Yeah. We yeah. need some secrets. Give us some what exclusives. The... What do you want to know? You're kind of a enigma to a lot of people. They don't get a lot of info from you. So, what you know? Now that you've completed school, are your parents like all okay with you doing Dota again? You know, like what's? Yeah, they've always been okay with me playing Dota, even when. <laughs> Even when I was in school, um, if I would have, if I decided to drop out of school last year or whatever, I think uh, they would have supported me. Wait, so it was your decision? It was my decision. To... Okay, yeah. all right. It's very right. responsible. God damn it, we need something juicy. We got all these beautiful movies. Yeah, give us an never... insider Dota juice. Yeah, uh, we need, we need that, something uh, spicy, Zai. Come yeah, on, it's man. It's going to get you in trouble if the person that you talk about listens to it. Yeah. <clears throat> God, <laughs> you, you should you should ask me to prepare this stuff. Come on, man. I'm sorry, I mean like I can't tell you we're gonna ask you that. It's, it's kind of. I mean, then I would have thought of something. Um... Yeah, there's really nothing of it. Have you ever been in a fight, Zai? You ever fought? <laughs> you ever been in a fight? Yeah, ever... I think in, in like second grade, I was like seven, I think. Did you win? I mean, it was like a it, it wasn't a very violent fight. Right, like, but did you I, like, win? Yeah, I won. <laughs> Everyone remembers their first fight, dude. You remember if you win your first fight. It's like, did you win your first fight? Oh, God. No. 
No, I no? didn't win. I didn't you got, win. You got the shit kicked out of you? I got I, I got fucked up. I got fucked up. But it's the we <laughs> it's the Wiener Boy story. We've already told that story before. Oh. So. Well, I, I haven't heard it, but I'll go look it up. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. Zai don't don't want to hear that. All right. Can you handle yourself now, Zai? Can you, do you think you would win in a fight like the average seventeen year old or nineteen year old? I mean, I don't know how to fight, but I'm a pretty big guy. If I came at you at the next land and said, I'm gonna fucking I mean, kill you. <laughs> would you be able to kill me, Zai? This isn't yeah. it. We can't end this till we get something juicy. Alright? Every every hot pants we get something juicy. We can't you can't be the first guy that walks out without giving us something. Do you wanna know better? our PPD Oh Pop shut up shut up dude? Shut up. He's about what to he's say? about nothing. Go ahead. What's the juice? Right. I was just gonna tell you about our ping pong rankings in the EG house. Oh shit. Okay. Oh shit. Know? Yeah, we've, been play, we've been playing a lot of ping pong. I know you're really good at it. I'm an expert at ping pong. Yeah, we, Charlie came here and played and he fucking kicked everyone's ass. And then he said he lost to you. <laughs> Charlie, so you're, I don't even remember playing Charlie. Yeah, it's probably well, just... Damn, like, that's what kind of <laughs> imprint he left on <laughs> you. Just, Holy <laughs> shit. I don't another, even remember. Another remember. Asian guy you slayed at the ping pong table. Alright, give us the ping pong rankings. That's perfect. Yeah, that's just the juice the we need. Alright, so S tier is probably Saho. Okay. And then A tier is, I think, Fear and Phil. Uh huh. B tier is me and Crit. C tier is Artur, and D tier is Samal. Oh. So, C Artur's only C tier? He did return one of my serves once. Yeah, I mean. Maybe he's like between B and C. God uh, damn it, I, this I, is I, not juicy at all. <laughs> Fuck. I'd say, I'd say he's worse than me. Do you think you guys could beat Beachy Gaming in ping pong? Oh. Wait, which the F boys cloud? I I don't know. I just picked a random Chinese team. I can't. Yeah, because I know a lot of like some of the Chinese teams always play. I know DDC and ZYF play a lot of ping pong. <coughs> Quake was actually pretty good. I haven't played him. All right. I pro I probably lose to anyone that's you know somewhat competent. I'm gonna. And have... art style is really good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people who are pretty good. Okay, I'm I gonna. Remember, I remember we played with the uh, IG at Red Bull Battlegrounds. Uh -huh. I think I think I beat Ferrari, if I remember. Ferrari seems like he'd be really good at it though. Uh, I don't think he is. <laughs> I mean, maybe maybe he was just you know letting me. What's this it. conversation? Okay, I'm, I'm, this is my last attempt to get any juice. Zai. Right. Okay. I'm gonna give you the su uh, a magical ability. You get to make one person disappear. You don't kill them, but you wipe them from existence. They were never existed. Nobody's affected any badly. They just are gone. Out of anybody in the world, who would it be, dude? Anybody um, in the world? Like anybody. Donald Trump or something? Like yes. And said anyone in the Dota scene? They could. No, no, no. Because this will be. This will tell us. What if I chose Hillary Clinton and then Trump would win and the whole fucking world would win? No, if you pick you Hillary could do Clinton, that. Bernie Sanders would be the candidate and Bernie Ooh, Sanders. God. Would win. <laughs> Oh, God. That actually does everyone a favor. Right Who now. would it be, Zai? One person that never exists. You don't have to explain it. You just gotta drop a name. This is such a hard question. This is our. This is the dirt, dude. This is what we've been looking for. Wait, wait. Before you answer this, why is Phil better than Charlie? What? <laughs> Phil's just better, dude. He talks why? about movies. He's nice. He doesn't give you condescending looks all the time. Does Phil's homework better? Or? I mean, he's not, at, he's not at school anymore. Oh. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much, it's pretty much as you said. Zach <laughs> <laughs> like, knows. It's like you, uh, you have two people who do the same job. Let's say they do the same job equally well. And then one of them's the kind guy that, you know, he cooks for you. He does nice things for you. He watches movies with you. And the other guy's just a fucking asshole. <laughs> You know, I think that will do. I think that will do for the good enough. That's, that's good enough. To the, we went go karting the other day, right? Yeah. With the with the team, and Charlie was uh -huh. there, and Charlie was just fucking ramming people. <laughs> <laughs> that's his personality. There yeah. you go. So, would Try you choose him? Is he the one to disappear? No. No. <laughs> Damn. Char Charlie let all the analyst desk stuff get to his head, man. He did. He, really he's does. got an ego now. He thinks he's he hot shit. The best. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> He broke his phone though. Why are we go karting? Good. <laughs> <laughs> he had All it right. coming. The fuck out. <laughs>
All right, we're going to let you go. I think we tortured you enough. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to Hot Pants. I'm Slax. This is Hot Bit. And, of course, our honorable guest, Zai. We wish you the best of luck on the new EG roster. Everybody's watching and waiting, and we're sure it's going to be great. Uh, anything you want to say out there to the fans or anybody before you go? Uh, I guess thank you for having me on the show. Um, please follow our team. Support us. If we lose, don't be assholes to us. There we just, go. We're just we're just humans. The Her boys. The boys. The, Shit. The what boys. happened in Europe? What did you guys oh, do together? In Europe? Yeah. Just... You guys went on vacation. Any yeah, juicy we did. shit? Um. No, nothing really. I mean, it was just plus a vacation. You go there, you look at things, you drink. You go to the next place, you look at things, you drink. Rinse and repeat, and then you go home. Great. We ruined the outro for that. Great. Okay. Yeah. Good. What are Thanks. you talking about? I didn't know what was going to say. <laughs> you ruined the I'm outro for nothing. With I mean, lots you... of money in Europe. Of course, like, something crazy happened. He's just not telling us. Yeah. yeah we did. All right, we actually did heroin. We ordered, like, seven oh! prostitutes. Sick. And that's hot pants. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, guys. We'll see you around. Thanks a lot, Zach. Si.